So the live stream, if you missed it, for the 9980XE featured this, which is a gigantic radiator that has four 200 millimeter fans on one side. We could have done four on the other, but we didn't have a mounting bracket for another four fans. Uh, so we put four 140s on the back, four 200s on the front. So what we're doing here today is walking you through the bench. If you missed the stream or you need a recap, walk through the final results of our overclocking efforts with the 9980XE. Because of course, the ultimate goal, the question we asked at the beginning of the stream was, Compared to the 7980XE, which you can delit and get decent thermals and overclocks with, can you achieve a similar clock to the 7980XE delitted with a 9980XE with solder with a reasonable cooling solution, not something crazy like dry ice or liquid nitrogen? So we went with something that you can fit inside of a computer case, provided you remove all other components in the case. Before that, this video is brought to you by iBuyPower and their Rush Delivery to You program. The fresh RDY approach gets high-end gaming PCs shipped the same day you order them, and is also one of the only places you can get a 9900K for a reasonable price right now. Systems include the RDY Enthusiast Level Gaming PC with a 2080 Ti, 9900K, and 16 gigabytes of 3200 MHz memory, available with same-day shipping or pickup locally. These systems are built by people who are experienced builders and component choice makes sense. Learn more at the link in the description below. What we ended up with then, this is the obviously the showpiece here, even ignoring the $2,000 CPU behind it. This is more interesting right now. And that's because we've never worked with this before. So this radiator, we showed it at a PAX event previously, I think. And uh, the company is called Watercool. They largely work in Europe, but I think they're expanding their US presence. And so Watercool makes this. This is called the Mora. Uh, MO-RA, I guess Mo Radiator or something. And this is the Mora 420. It is big enough to fit nine 140 millimeter fans on each side. You can do 18 if you wanted, uh, or four 140, four 200s on each side with an adapter, which is what we did, just because just it's kind of interesting. So this is less air pressure than we would get with 18 140s, but it's better for a live stream, it's a bit quieter. And honestly, the thermals were completely fine anyway. So on our max overclock result, we ended up with Let's see, we were in about the 80s for 5 gigahertz on 6 cores at 1.38 volts. That's really good. To, to be uh, not delitted, where liquid metal is superior here just because it's a thinner interface, but solder is easier to work with, uh, especially if we start doing things like dry ice, because with dry ice, you start going sub-zero that much, you need thermal paste. You can't use liquid metal. Liquid metal is really, it gets better as the heat increases, so as you reduce temperature, it gets worse. Uh, so solder should be superior as we reduce the temperature and drive it down really far. But for this thing, we're about 80 degrees for 5.06 core with 1.38 volts, which is crazy good. Uh, and all of that is thanks to the cooling solution. So other than this thing, which is just fun to work with, it is also, I don't know, how thick is this? So the whole thing, there we go, in millimeters is 65 millimeters or so. Uh, that's counting the frame. It's a bit smaller for the actual tubing. As for surface area, so it's obviously fairly thick. The surface area though, it's about 33 square feet. And that's because all the fins, of course, in here have surface area. So if you took out every single piece of metal, all the fins and all the pipes, and you just laid it out in a square on the floor, it'd be about six by six, 5.7 by 5.7 square root of 33. So very large radiator is the point I'm getting at. It's also really heavy. And for that reason, we're not really concerned about it going anywhere. Because it's, I mean, you would have to try to push it over. Uh, it, we did mount it on some feet here. I think it has a wall mounting kit. I don't know how far it spaces it from the wall, but I think it's got a wall mounting kit. I think Dare Bauer was working on like one case at Gamescom that he showed that might accommodate this. But uh, realistically, you're probably using it externally. And interestingly, you can use this for passive cooling of about 200 watts. So uh, we'll be looking at that later. But anyway, this is hooked up to something that is much more than 200 watts. We're doing over 500 watts for our 9980XE last night. For the rest of the system, other than the really interesting radiator, we have the EK Waterblocks dual DDC pump. We've used this in the past. We used this for the Rip J stream where we had it in the ice bucket. And so that's got two pumps in it, in and out hooked up. I labeled those. So out's going into the radiator at the bottom, and then it comes out of the radiator at the top over there, and then comes into the block, comes out of the block, goes into, uh, into the reservoir and then into the pump again. And an EK reservoir as well. I don't know how big that is. but So that's our setup for liquid cooling. We have some QDCs connected. These are quick disconnects. These are used for just uh, if we want to dunk it in ice later, it'll make it easier to extend the tubing length for that. And then for the rest of the system, 
what we have is an EVGA X299 dark motherboard that we've we've been using this for 100% of our X299 overclocking live streams because it's just it's uh, it's one of the easiest boards to work with for overclocking at this level. Not great for stock usage, as we found out, because it doesn't really run things at stock, but uh, very good for overclocking. And so that's got on it a kit of G-Skill Trident Z Black memory, 3600 megahertz. The memory, we've been using this memory since RIP LTT with the Titan V. We use it again with RIP J. We've used it for all the high overclock streams. And it for sure does 4000 megahertz, but we couldn't get it there last night. Just stability issues, part of it's on the platform side, the motherboard, part of it is on maybe the IMC, but more likely the issue is on the motherboard side, we're looking into it a bit, even though it's held those clocks before, because the issue is really uh, at 4,000 megahertz, the tertiary timings and some of the unserviced timings just get all crazy and screwy. And if you don't manually tune them, or you can't in the case of the unserviced ones, then you basically just have to keep retrying boot until it trains and it works. And we didn't have the patience for that last night because it was a stream. So ended up at 3,800 megahertz on this, CL15, and then uh, had a 260 for refresh cycle, which is pretty good. Maxed out the refresh interval as always, and then also pushed uh, TFA FAW for active window we had at 38. We can't get it lower, unfortunately. And then we had uh, several other timings. I mean, most of the small tertiary timings and unimportant secondary timings were at like four or six. So that gives you an idea for the memory settings. The block, we should show this off too. We'll have some B-roll of this. So the block is a heat killer four CPU block, which is just, it's a really, uh, it's got a lot of mass of copper in one spot and it has a dense array of micro fins in it. So that helped with keeping our temperatures low last night. VRM is cooled by the EVJ dark fans that are built in. And then we've got the yellow and black cables hooked up so I could run a current clamp on this during the live stream, which is how we could get live feeds of the power consumption, about 500 plus watts. For video card, the video card is running really hot idle, which I guess is just what RTX does. But the video card is an RTX 2080 Ti FTW3 that got basically zero use. So we've got one of the best video cards you can get right now. It didn't get used at all because we were just doing time spy CPU overclocking. And our objective was about 12,400 points because that was what we got with an ice cooled 7980XE with liquid metal. And we ended up at a bit over 12,000. We're at 12,138, which is extremely good because this wasn't on ice, this is just on air. It's on, as I said, a completely reasonable cooling solution that anybody could use, um, a set of four 200 millimeter fans. So didn't use ice on this one. Not quite something you'd put in your case to be realistic, but pretty damn good. And for the clocks, what you were all wondering about, it's 12,138. That had us at 5.0 on six cores, which is really good. 1.38 volts. We have room for more if we want to do it. And our memory already ran, ran through those settings, but we had 1.85, which turned out to be 1.84. So on this motherboard for the memory, we ran uh, SA at 1.185, IO at 1.3, VMesh at 1.2. We had mesh at 32X, and that can go probably to 33, maybe 34. Uh, and I think that runs through most of the settings we had. So the rest of the cores were at 4.9 for clarity on that. So really fun setup to work with. Uh, power supply should go through just because the power consumption was so high. AX1600i for that. And then we had a, that's a Corsair power supply. We had a, a um, Corsair fan controller in there as well, Commander Pro. And not really a fan of, of the fan control software, but uh, it, is, it is necessary to use this device. And we just used it because, I mean, that's a lot of fans and they're kind of far away from the system. So we just routed them all into one controller centrally and then could control the speeds for this, the stream. So it wasn't too loud for anyone during the stream. Because if we max it out, it gets, it gets quite loud, uh, as I can show off. So as I was saying, if you max it out, it gets pretty loud. Most of that noise is from the 3000 RPM knock to a fan. It's, it's, a server grade fan basically uh so yeah lots of fun in the stream thank you for joining in if you joined and here's your recap i mean it's 5.06 core much better than what we got in the review we were stuck at 4.4 ish in the review we could kind of do 4.6 but it required so much voltage 1.25 volts to stay stable that it was just it was overheating and we were getting clock drops 
which put it as worse than the 7980XE with liquid metal. So that was our big hang up in the review is it's just, it's not as good as the loaded 7980XE from purely a thermal standpoint. That said, we think this CPU is probably a better bin. So if that turns out to be true, we just need to get it colder to get those, uh, to really stretch the clocks. And with the current setup, we can do that pretty well. I mean, it's, it's about where ours was. The difference in points here at this point is pr primarily going to be the memory settings because uh, we were faced with tertiary timing issues. So very good CPU once it's under almost ice. Technically, we put an ice cube in the reservoir by popular demand. And uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be good once we put it under literal ice, but still recommending the 7980XE delitted if you're going for enthusiast overclocking and, and you're looking at these two chips, obviously. We're ignoring like everything else in the market, which are probably more sensible purchases in a lot of cases, but if you need a high frequency and high core count, you can get it with the 9980XE or the 7980XE. It's just a question of what are you going to do with it physically? If you're gonna mod it, then get the 7980XE. And if not, then this one's better stock, I guess. Check the review for more on that. But thank you for watching. Store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly. And a big shout out to all of you who bought stuff during the stream. That's what keeps us going in the stream. The store is the best way to support those. And you go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus for behind the scenes videos. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time. <laughs>